what we're going to be going over here is job order costing where we're going to have to make a year-end manufacturing overhead adjustment using the proration method and it's going to be based on the ending balance in the accounts that are being adjusted for any under allocated or over allocated overhead and really that's all we're going to know in this example we're going to know only the ending balance in the accounts that we're going to be adjusting here and then we're going to have to calculate any under allocated or over allocated overhead. Now in this case we're going to be looking at in this example over allocated overhead. So when we're talking about job order costing what we would have done here would we would have used normal costing where we would have used an applied overhead rate here or a predetermined or budgeted overhead rate for the uh, jobs that went through for the year here but what we have now at the end of the year here we actually know our actual overhead costs or indirect costs here so what there's going to be a difference between what we applied here or that predetermined overhead rate that we've used for the year versus our actual overhead that we have for the year here and we're going to have to make an adjustment okay so first off let's calculate what we are applied overhead rate or that predetermined overhead rate so what we would do in this case uh, we would have taken our budgeted total indirect cost here and divided it by our budget direct labor hours that we have for the year here and, and that's going to give us some rate so for our bud total budget indirect cost we had eight hundred thousand here in our budgeted direct labor hours sixteen thousand hours so that's going to give us a fifty dollar per hour here overhead rate now at the end of the year here now we know our actual indirect total indirect costs and our actual direct labor hours so for our actual total indirect costs we have 688,800 and our actual direct labor hours we have 16,400 hours so that's going to give us a $42 per hour overhead rate so you can see we've over allocated here a budgeted amount here was $50 per hour which we've used here for our accounting records and our actual uh, amount here is $42 per hour. So now we have to determine our total amount that we applied versus our actual amount. So the total that we applied, we're going to use that $50 per hour budgeted rate here times the actual hours that we have for the year here, 16,400. So $50 uh, rate here times 16,400 hours is going to give us $820,000 worth of overhead that we applied. And our actual amount here, well again, that would take our $42 here per hour, our actual rate again, times the actual direct labor hours we have for the year here at 16,400. So that's going to give us an actual overhead that we have for the year here of $688,000. $800. So we over applied here. $820,000 is greater than our $688,800 by $131,200. So that's uh, our over applied overhead here and we're going to have to remove that from our accounting records. Okay. Okay. So up here. So now for the proration method. And again, it's going to be based on the account ending balance here. We're not going to know what's sitting in the account as far as our overhead. All we're knowing is what's sitting in this in the account's ending balance. And what we're going to do here is we're going to spread the adjustment for any under or over allocated overhead between the ending balance in the work and process account, the finished goods account, and our cost of goods sold. So first off we have to calculate the percentage uh, that each of these accounts represent. So what we're going to do here, we take our account balance before the adjustment, where we got our for our three counts, uh, three accounts here: work and process, finished goods, cost of goods sold. We total we total that total amount here of our account account balance that we have before the adjustment. So we're totaling up all our three accounts here. We're going to come and put our total amount here: two million one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So to determine the percent that each represents, all we do is take the their account balance here, the work in process, 50,000. Again, divide it by 2,125,000, and that represents 2.35% of our total. Same for finished goods, 75,000 divided by 2,125,000, repre and that finished goods represents 3.53%. And then cost of goods sold, well, we have 2 million here in our account balance, divided by the total amount, 2,125,000. So cost of goods sold represents 94.12%.
total percentage adds up to 100%. So we take, to determine our proration math, amount of overhead that each is going to be allocated here or that we're going to have to remove, just take your, the over allocated amount that was at total 131,200 times the percentage that each represents. So for work in process, 2.35% times our uh, over allocated amount here is going to give a, a proration or a prorated amount here of three three thousand eighty three dollars that we're going to have to remove from our records and then for finished goods three point five three percent times our over allocated amount we're going to get four thousand six hundred thirty one dollars that has to be removed and the cost of goods ninety four point one two percent times our over allocated amount is going to give us one hundred twenty three thousand four hundred eighty five dollars so those have to be removed they all total up to one hundred thirty one thousand two hundred dollars here that's what we have to remove. So using that percentage here that we allocated for each of our uh, accounts here based on our total and what was sitting in the account, we were able to determine the proration amount here that we have to remove from the account in this case because it, they were we have over allocated our overhead. Okay, so now moving down to our, we'll look at it in terms of T accounts here, go through these T accounts just to see how our, uh, how our, uh, overhead has to be accounted for and in this case removed. So we start with our manufacturing overhead control account and that's sort of a special account that we have here. So we would have debited in this case the actual cost of our overhead that we knew at the end of the year here that we calculated at the end of the year and that was that $688,800 here. But we would have credited out here during the year here for all those uh, for our, our over or that applied overhead here, based on that uh, budgeted amount here, we have, uh, we applied eight hundred twenty thousand dollars worth of overhead that would have moved into our work and process inventory accounts and the other accounts. So the difference here between what we've credited out here uh, of eight hundred twenty thousand and what was sitting here now at six hundred eighty-eight thousand eight hundred, the hundred and thirty-one thousand two hundred that we calculated up above here, how we uh, prorated that, that has to be removed because it's we use too much it's over the actual amount here by 131,200 okay so to our work and process account here again this is a control account all of these are control accounts here and that's where we got subsidiary records backing up all of what we've done here so we would have moved into our work and process account that eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars here and and not all but a portion of that would have gone into this work and process that we've have but now we've got an ending balance that we have to deal with here and use that uh, prorated amount here that we have to remove so uh, just showing in numbers here again we have included in overhead that was that hundred thirty one thousand two hundred dollars worth at times the percentage that this work in process represents that two point three five percent that was the three thousand eighty three dollars that has to be removed because based on our proration here of this total off 131200 so $3,083 has to be removed from the work and process account. So before our ending balance here, before the proration we had sitting at 50000 okay, now we subtract out the 3083 So our ending balance here is now sitting at $46,917 after the proration. So what we would have done with this $3,083, that was really, uh, we would have credited our work and process here and that's really our cost of goods manufacturing that our cost of goods manufacturing or we would have credited our work and process to reduce that uh, overhead that we applied here we 2.35 percent of that has to be removed from our work and process account 2.35 percent of the over allocated amount okay so what we would have done now we would have credited or reduced our work and process by that amount here. And then that cost of goods sold, which was our really all our direct materials, that applied overhead, direct labor used, that we would have credited out here. And that would have gone into our finished goods uh, control account again here. So that cost of goods manufactured, they came in with that over applied overhead here that we have to remove as well. So in this case, again, we had that $131,200 here times in this case, the finished goods represented 3.53% of the over allocated amount here. That's gonna give us that $4,631. 4, 
and we have to remove that. So our balance here in finished goods before this proration was $75,000. Subtract out the $4,631 here, and you're going to have an ending balance here of $70,369 after the amount. So we've taken out, out of our finished goods, we would have had to credit our finished goods for that $4,631 to remove it here. And then finally going up to our cost of goods sold. Uh, remember our finished goods, we would have credited it out here for the amount of those cost of goods sold for the period. And that would have gone into our debit here and our cost of goods sold. And again, that had, in this case, it had that an extra amount here of that over allocated overhead based on 94.3%. Uh, so take that times what our total over allocated amount, 131,200. This is where you get that $123,485 we calculate. Again, that has to be removed because it was over allocated. So we're sitting here with $2 million here before we've made the adjustment. That was the ending balance here in our cost of goods sold, subtracting our, uh, our proration amount here, and we're going to come up with $1,876,515. That's sitting in our cost of goods sold here after we removed that over allocated percentage of overhead we have for our cost of goods sold. So you can see what's going on here. We had, in this case, we would have had to credit out or reduce our cost of goods sold by crediting it by the $123,485. Okay, so that's really how we track this uh, overhead, this over allocated overhead through our T accounts here and our accounts and made our adjustments. But in this case, we had to credit or reduce all our our accounts here. Now remember this cost of goods sold that's sitting on the income statement and all the other accounts were on our balance sheet. So what we would have done here, just our general rule here uh, for our manufacturing overhead here, if it's over allocated to our work, over allocated our work in process, our finished goods and our cost of goods uh, sold account should be decreased or credited. That's what we did here. We decreased or credited them for the over allocated amount because they came in here, uh, a debit would have come in for each of these counts here with the uh, amount of overhead that, that over allocated amount. So we had to remove it here by crediting each of those accounts. Now, if the opposite would be true here, had we, uh, in this case, had we had under allocated overhead, that is if the alloc overhead that we actually applied here was a $688,800 and our actual amount, that was what we would have applied, assuming that would have been under allocated here, and we would have actually had 820000 here in actual overhead costs, then the opposite would, would be true here. What we would have done in each of those accounts, we would have had to, instead of remove it, we would have had to add it back because it would have been under allocated. So in this case, our work in process at 3000 $83 here, instead of crediting or reducing our work and process account, we would have debited or increased it here for $3,083. That's the case if we had uh, our actual, uh, what we what we applied here would have been under, what, in, in the, just reversing, the $820,000 would have been our actual and our applied would have been the $688,800. Okay, so that's our general rule here. If you, if in this case, if you, if it was increase, you would incre if you would if you're under allocated here, you would have to increase each of your accounts that you're looking at here by debiting them. And in our case here, where we over allocated the overhead, then we had to credit our accounts or remove them, remove that over allocated amount. And we did it based on that percentage that we based on our what each of these accounts represented as far as the percentage based on the in a total ending over a total ending balance in each of the accounts and that's what they represented and then one final thing here all right let's go here closing entries to bring to zero our manufacturing overhead related accounts so in this case i'm just showing our debits and credits here for each of those accounts work and process finished goods cost of goods sold we would have as i mentioned here we credited each one of those here for the over allocated overhead and then uh our our manufacturing control account here, we would have also had to credit that out here for $688,800. And then we would have debited our manufacturing overhead that we allocated in that control account here of $820,000. So our credits here with the, what we've removed here and what we, our actual amount here 
and what we had to remove balance with our debit here the total amount that we applied and we can look at that and we can over to our account here our manufacturing control account we had an actual amount here 688,800 and that we would have had to on a debit amount we had to close it out we would have credited that account here for that amount 688,800 and what we applied here that we had a credit amount in of 820,000 we would have debited that out here by 820,000 for our closing and that's what's represented here in our debits and credits that we have okay so nonetheless that's what we have to do here now if if the opposite would have been true had we had an under allocated overhead by whatever amounts we're looking then instead of crediting these we would have had to debit them or increase our accounts here and then of course these would be switched around to our would be switched as well okay so that'll summarize our discussion here where we had to go over and make some year-end adjustments and all we really knew was the ending balance in the accounts that we had to make adjustments in the work and process finished goods and cost of goods so we didn't know what was sitting in these accounts here for the actual overhead now that is really ideally what you want to know you want to know what's sitting in your accounts for the actual overhead that you have here and then you can remove it based on remove it or increase it whatever the case for whatever the case is you either under allocated or over allocated but in this case we just knew what the ending balance was in each of those accounts and then we had to make our adjustments based on the percentage that each of these accounts represented for uh, the accounts themselves to make that uh, prorate, prorated amount that we had to take out of it okay so that'll end our discussion